Hello, my name is Daniel Yuck. Thank you for watching today. I appreciate you, your time, and your support. Within this video, I want to share with you how to go about never losing a tattoo stencil again, whether it's on fake skin and or human skin. The process that I'm going to share with you in this video can be applied to both fake and human skin. By the end of this video, you will be well acquainted with what to do if you are going to lose your stencil throughout your tattoo session. Should you have any questions, I encourage you to drop a comment down below. I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring my bell as I will be bringing more videos like this for you all. I do also have social medias under the same name as my YouTube channel. I have Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok all under Daniel Yuck. I would appreciate the support over there as well. With that being said, let's get right on into this. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using some Scott Shop wipes that you see right here this is spirit stencil paper this was printed on a bluetooth thermal printer which i've done in-depth reviews on all the, or most of the gear featured in this video i will also leave my amazon affiliate and other affiliate links for you in the description below so you can check out the gear featured in this video on your end i'm also going to be using this piece of real skin fake skin to get my points across within this video along with the mass archer 2 tattoo machine to go ahead and demonstrate all of my points I will also be using this Ink Claw Bug Pen 3 round liner for this demonstration. However, most small needle configurations would work for the methods that I'm about to share with you in this video. I'm also going to be using Dynamic Black Tattooing Ink as well to demonstrate here along with maybe the Dynamic Black Gray Wash Pre-Made Set. And again, my affiliate links will be for you in the description below. That right there is the gear that I will be using to demonstrate. I'm also going to be applying these tattoo stencils with Green Card Stencil Applicant as well. Where I want to begin is by placing down my stencils onto this fake skin. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and we'll be right back. So I have my stencil placed down. Let's go ahead and do a reveal here to see the results. So this is the stencil that I will be demonstrating here with. I went ahead and I went with this design right here as there wasn't enough room for both designs. However, I'll still demonstrate the points here with this one design. Now, typically I would run a heater, a heat gun over the design to dry it within a few seconds. We're not going to do that within this video. I'm actually going to leave it the way that it is and I'm going to work with what I have without letting it dry. This is to mimic a more realistic approach with human skin. Since we can't take a heat gun to human skin without hurting and burning the client, that's unrealistic, a heat gun to go to human skin. So I want to stick with that sort of realistic approach and use the fake skin without drying it. One of the scariest things that I've ever experienced while tattooing is not the danger of tattooing itself, is losing the stencil along the way and not knowing where to go, not having a guide to assist me to complete the tattoo. That can be really daunting to some of us, if not most of us, and I'm sure a lot of us as tattoo artists have experienced stencil wipe more than what we wanted. I'm going to be sharing two different methods with you that we can use to prevent losing our stencil so that way we have a guide throughout the entire tattoo session. Let's get on into that now. I feel like it's important to note that losing a stencil is probably more common than what we would want it to be. A lot of things can happen throughout the tattoo session such as over wiping an area therefore removing the stencil prematurely or applying too much ointment therefore removing the stencil prematurely. These are things that we have to be prepared for. Losing a stencil could be a make or break for any tattoo session. Having to reapply a stencil to a wounded area is probably not the preferable way to go. So this video is to go ahead and prevent any of that from happening happening so that way we have a guide throughout the entire tattoo session even if we are losing the tattoo stencil. For me personally, the main reasons why I would lose a stencil was because I put too much ink into my cartridge tip and when I started applying the line, the ink kind of smudged and pulled up, therefore I would have to wipe that area. When we wipe away, we're losing layers of that stencil which is going to lighten up over the wipes. That's one of the main reasons why I would lose my stencil. Another main reason is that I would over apply ointment to an area and the surrounding areas, therefore loosening the layers of the stencil all around the neighboring areas, which is more of a slow burn. Over the time that we apply ointment, it kind of lightly removes layer by layer as opposed to wiping away. It kind of removes layers at a time, if that makes sense. I feel like it's far better to be prepared and have a plan in case we are losing the stencil quicker than what we would have wanted in a tattoo session. Now, 
One quick tip. The longer we let a stencil dry on human skin, the better chances we have of that stencil holding up throughout the entire process. So the longer we can let it dry on human skin, the better. So with that being said, let's get on into the demonstration aspect. I'm gonna share with you two different ways that we can go about preventing losing our stencil. This may be something that we have to work up into and get comfortable with, as I surely did. It may not come as natural to you as it may another person. However, this is something that is great to work on in the back end, especially on face skin, so that we're better equipped when we do start losing a stencil, should we start losing a stencil. I'm gonna begin with this bottom area right here. I'm gonna be running at 5.5 volts and I'm using a bug pin 3 round liner now this design right here doesn't really require any hard lining at all however I just need to be able to have all of these lines right here that are making up this design show when I'm done applying the tattoo now one way that we can go about doing that is I'm going to put a little bit of dynamic black ink within my tube here so that way I don't get any pulling so as you can see I have a little bit of black ink here one way that we can go about preventing any stencil loss would be to simply ghost line the areas before we start working them. So essentially this process is replacing the purple line stencil with very, very thin ghost lines. Even if the original line weight is supposed to be different from this three round liner, the reason why I'm gonna go with ghost lines is so that way I can see the lines tattooed in there instead of having to worry about losing the stencil. We're not gonna lose faint tattoo lines the same way that we would with this stencil. So right here. So where I would begin is putting a little bit of ink in here so that way we don't get pulling. And then what I'm going to do is find out where I'm going to start and then just begin applying this line as best I can. I'm not going for perfection, but I'm also not trying to be messy with it. I just need to apply a line to guide me from A to B. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab right here like so. And I'm going to repeat that process with the surrounding lines. Now again, I'm not trying to go for dark, perfect, defined lines. All I'm doing is simply putting a ghost line to act as a guide so that way I could trace it when I'm done. Now if I were to get Vaseline and place it in this area right here and wipe away, you're going to see that the stencil is going to wipe away, but we're still stuck with these very, very faint lines. That right there is exactly what we want. I feel this is a lot better than losing the stencil wall together. If a line is too light for your liking, then you can feel free to go back over it like so. And I'm just using the very tip of the needle to make sure that I don't saturate this line and make it darker than what I need right now. All I'm doing is applying a ghost layer of lines so that way I don't have to worry about losing this stencil when I actually work on it. So you can see, in this area right here started getting smudged and over time, as I start working right here, chances of this happening all around here are through the roof. This is likely to happen any area that I'm working in. So what I would like to do now is I'm gonna to move to this area and I'm going to begin doing the same thing. And this is one of the ways that we can go about preventing losing our stencil. I use two different methods. I use very thin lines or we can use dots as I'm gonna demonstrate here as well. So you can see I went right there if I were to get a little bit of Vaseline here, place it on and remove it, you can see that I'm removing the entire stencil from underneath. I can't really get close right here to clean these areas as I don't want to interfere with those lines right there. And that is essentially one way that we can go about preventing losing our stencil. And I can do this if I feel comfortable doing the lines. I can go ahead and line the entire thing the way that you see me doing here. And that's why it's important to not fill the cartridge up all the way with ink. So that way we don't have any pulling, making less of a mess. Now, I'm going to go over here and begin working that way with lines still. Just very, very faint lines. Nothing permanent, nothing defined or anything like that. I just want a guide so I can come back and work on this area and I can wipe and wipe and wipe without having to worry about losing the design like so. Now lining, ghost lining is one way that we can do it. Let's say if we have a design that requires no lining at all, another thing that we can do is use dots. So we can simply just do little dots all the way or I'm sorry, let's say if we have a design that is line based, we can use dots like so 
and kind of use a connect the dot approach. Now, both of them have their own application. I'm sure you can find out how you want to use them and what manner you want to use the ghost lines or these ghost dots to each their own. I kind of feel like we're still going to get to where we're going. That is another way that we can go about preventing losing our stencil. I can just simply dot the entire area should I choose to do so. If I didn't want to ghost line it for whatever reason, I feel like this is totally acceptable as well and would still allow us to have the design integrity intact while still applying the tattoo and not having to worry about losing the stencil. So if I were to go over here and wipe away, you can see that these dots are still making up a design here that I can 110% work with. And you can see that the tattoo stencil is in fact coming off now. This is going to be artistic preference. If you would choose to dot it and then connect the dots, you can do so. Or if you would just rather ghost line the entire thing, you can do so. There really isn't a right or wrong. It's just a matter of personal preference. Whatever you as the artist feel is best. And then I can kind of just repeat that approach all the way through. You don't want to spread the dots out too far at all either. So that way you have a clear indication of the lines where they should go. So that is another way that you can go about preserving your stencil. And again, just to confirm, it really doesn't matter which approach you use. If you want to do some fine lines, you can do so. If you want to do dots, you can do so. I'll kind of do half and half so that way you can see the results for both to give you a better idea of which one you th uh, think you would rather want to use. Making sure that I don't put the dots too far because I want to be able to see all of the details within the design. I think the real key is to not overfill the cartridge there with ink so that way you don't have to experience any pulling. And this could be done with any design that we're doing on human skin. It doesn't matter where the placement is at. We can still approach it either or. We can use dots or we can ghost line a design. So that way we can work on it freely without having to have any stress or worry about losing the design. I'm going to do some ghost lines on this side down here. And then I'll go ahead and do dot work on the upper part up there. So I'm just using the very, very tip of the needle to keep my lines really, really faint and light. All the way through. And you can see how quickly this is going. And you can see we're starting to lose some stencil here. So when that happens, just kind of want to be mindful, be careful. And then just simply apply what you see. I think the idea is as well not to panic. Once we start panicking, then we're not going to be able to think clearly. Even if the design fluctuates a tad bit, as long as it makes sense and we're not winging it too much, we should be fine in terms of design integrity. As you can see, I can even add another petal right there, but I like the way that's looking, so we're going to leave it be. I'm going to do some ghost lines here in these really tight detailed areas, so that way it's easier for me to see. So you can kind of see that I'm using my artistic preference here to figure out if I want ghost lines or dots or both. Doesn't really matter which one you go with. Like so. Now the reason why I'm going with lines right here in the middle is so that way it's easier for me to read along the way. Now you can see this area is getting lost as well. And this is another reason why references are important so that way we can kind of follow it. But for this area, it's not too, too difficult to connect it that way and then finish it going the other way. With some ghost lines like so. And then the same thing with over here. I'm going to bring this around. Come around this way. 
and bring it up and finish it this way. Like so. And then one last pedal over here. So you can see my hand is over the design in very delicate areas, but I'm not worried at all because I've already ghost lined that entire area right there as I'm doing over here. Now what I can do is put Vaseline over the entire design and clean it up here and see what we're working with. So you can see now we are stuck with a very, very faint version of the design here. We can still see all the details. Everything is still mapped out. We can still apply this tattoo. The only difference is now we don't have to worry about losing the design at all. So here is the original design and you can see that it's accurately close. All of the lines are there. It's all mapped out, ready to be tattooed. I'm ready to add shading. I can do whatever I need to do now and I don't have to worry about losing the stencil anymore. Now you can see that the dot work here is doing the exact same thing as the lines. So at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to personal preference, which approach you like better. If you have, again, a design that requires no lines at all, maybe using some dots may not be a bad way to go. If you prefer to use dots, it's not a bad way to go. If you prefer to use ghost lines, it's not a bad way to go. That's gonna be artistic preference. Now, let's say if some lines are too light for you, feel free to go back over them and add the ghost line as needed. If you wanna add some dots to kind of help you finish the lines, by all means, you can do so. There really is no right or wrong. As long as we're staying true to the design integrity and for what the client asks for, I feel like that's the best way to go. Now, from here, what I could begin doing is applying my shading. And it's a lot less stressful now. I don't have to worry about losing any stencil at all. Everything is there. It's all mapped out easily for me to see. All it is now is just a patience game and taking my time applying the shading technically correct to the best of my ability. And then I'm just essentially going to repeat this throughout the entire design until it's completed. And you can see if I put Vaseline here and wipe away even with the surrounding areas, I don't lose any of the design. However, the stencil is completely gone now. It's important to note that these methods can be done with any design on any tattoo placed anywhere. There is no rules that say that this can be done only on certain tattoos. If we are struggling with a stencil, then I would always recommend to just start ghost lining it with a very, very thin needle. You don't want your lines to be dark at all, but you want them to be there enough so that way they can guide you through the rest of the way. And then from here now, it's just a focus game on applying the shading. And then I will have a happy client, so to speak. So this approach for me has made the process a lot less stressful. I have nothing to worry about when I am tattooing and when I start, if I start losing the design prematurely, this right here is the method that I take. This is the plan that I have implemented in place in case that were to happen to me throughout a tattoo session. So you can see I can wipe over and over and over and I'm not losing the design. This is exactly where we want to be.
Here we are at a top view and I wanted to leave a little bit of this area remaining so that way you can see the difference in the way that I'm working this rose and you can see the ghost lines and the dot lines do in fact hold up the entire course of the tattoo. As you saw in the time lapse, I was wiping and wiping and wiping and I knew where I was going to go every step of the way as the guy that we implemented earlier did not go away the way a stencil would. So you can see the methods that I'm using here to keep the stencil integrity definitely does translate over well. This tattoo is going to come out great. All I need to do is technically apply the shading throughout the design in the correct spaces and this is going to be one good looking rose. That right there is how I go about never losing my tattoo stencil throughout a session. If I notice that the stencil is coming off a little quicker than I wanted, I'll simply go ahead and repeat the process that I showed you all here in this video. And I'll do that until it's done and then complete the tattoo, whether it's lining with a thicker line weight or shading throughout the entire tattoo. That is exactly how I would approach it. And that's exactly how I would go about keeping myself from losing my tattoo stencil in my tattoo sessions. Should you have any questions at all, I encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this for you all. I do also have social medias under the same name as my YouTube. I have Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok all under Daniel Yuck. I would appreciate the support over there as well. With that being said, I appreciate your time and I thank you for your support. You have have a great day.